Today, I wanted to discuss one of the most common conditions that I see on a daily basis at my clinic, that being the most common cause of plantar heel pain, and that is plantar fasciitis. So the description of this is pretty characteristic, and I can make the diagnosis after they speak for probably no more than five seconds. But the classic symptoms that a patient will experience Clearly, the first step pain. So typically getting out of bed, first step that is taken by the patient would be quite uncomfortable, painful, tightness, achiness, sharp pain. And this will persist for the first few steps and eventually the foot does warm up. It does become more comfortable as things ease up with those first few steps. Depending on level of activity, symptoms can worsen as the day progresses. Uh, this is classic. So symptoms can worsen throughout the day if the patient has been a little bit more active. A more atypical cause for heel pain would be a nerve entrapment, the common location being in the lower back, like with sciatica. Another common location would be a region known as the tarsal tunnel. So that's kind of like carpal tunnel syndrome in the wrist. You can also have tarsal tunnel syndrome of the foot and the ankle. Another important distinction to make is the difference between acute plantar fasciitis and chronic plantar fasciitis. So I personally define acute symptoms of being less than six weeks in duration. Chronic would be, would be beyond six weeks of duration. With acute symptoms, the foot will be more inflamed. You don't see as much degeneration, thickening, or scar tissue deposition within the fascia itself. But beyond six weeks, that's when you will start to see those changes. This can easily be differentiated with either an ultrasound or MRI. My go-to would be ultrasound, almost for all patients, because I'm rarely seeing patients that have more acute symptoms. I do see a lot of confirmatory and second opinions for patients that have been living with this particular disorder for months, if not years. On an ultrasound, what you'll see is thickening of the plantar fascia. Normal thickness is anywhere between 0.3 centimeters to 0.4 centimeters. Normally, the plantar fascia will have a thin, wispy, heterogeneous structure to it on ultrasound, so there'd be a mix of grays and blacks and whites, but with more diseased tissue, all you will see is black. So we call this hypoechoa on the ultrasound. When it comes to treatment of plantar fasciitis, I do employ a multifaceted approach. So one thing that consistently is seen with patients that have a variety of foot issues, including plantar fasciitis, would be calf muscle tightness. So this can be either from the gastrocnemius muscle. That's the big beefy one in the back of the cap. You can also see tightness within the soleus muscle. So that one is a little bit deeper and also contributes to formation of the Achilles tendon, which ultimately attaches to the heel bone. Tightness in the calf musculature can lead to issues in the foot, particularly with plantar fasciitis. The reason for this is that with weight bearing and the influence of gravity, that tightness will get reflected and transmitted into the heart and the fascia. So there's more tension. That's why stretching the calf out and the hamstrings and the glutes is so pivotal and should be included in any protocol for treatment of acute or chronic plantar fasciitis. Another important feature to treatment would be supporting the arch itself. So I know this can get a little bit controversial, but I think it's really important because the data does support this. And anecdotally, I see a lot of improvement with some arch support as well. So the way an orthotic would work, whether it's a prefabricated device like off the shelf or a custom molded orthotic, is that it basically takes the weight away from the fascia. So plantar fasciitis, it really is an overuse injury or syndrome. So if you can reduce the amount of tension going through the plantar fascia with a device, then it's only going to help. And finally, how do you address the fascia specifically? So there are a few options for this. 
Of course, there are surgical options, but these are best reserved in a worst case scenario where patients simply have not responded to conservative care. They've exhausted all the non-operative options. That's when we look at surgery and I would reserve that for another video. So treating the fascia itself, some basic options would be a cortisone injection. Cortisone is an injectable anti-inflammatory. I don't think they work all that well from a repair standpoint, but at least for acute stages of plantar fasciitis, when you actually see inflammation, that's where I think a cortisone injection could potentially help. They don't work in isolation. You typically have to do the stretching and the orthotics, the physical therapy, the icing, everything else to go with it to see a good response. But classically, if they're done in isolation, I do not see a good long-term result. More advanced modality for chronic fasciitis would be shockwave therapy. So shockwave is a non-invasive needle three, non-drug, non-pharmacologic option that has been a lot more helpful I have found. And the data does actually support this for chronic fasciitis. So the idea is it's a probe that sends ballistic sound waves into the tissue. It does cause a desirable inflammatory response. It causes some micro trauma. And with that, you see more inflammation, more oxygen, more growth factors, more blood flow into the area to induce an actual healing response. So because we are relying on the body's capability to heal itself, it is not an overnight success story. I see almost immediate results with cortisone injections, but again, it's not a long lasting result in a lot of cases, but with shockwave, we're not seeing that immediate overnight success story. Uh, typically we are offering at my clinic four individual treatments separate by one week at a time and even at that last treatment, so four weeks in, most patients, and include myself, are not satisfied at that point. But you can actually see continued improvement for another uh, six to eight weeks, even after the last treatment. And that's when we're, we'll see that 85% improvement in patient satisfaction. And that's a long lived response. So, generally speaking, patients with acute symptoms will do well the cortisone injection, orthotics physical therapy, and aggressive posterior muscle group calf uh, stretching. When it comes to more chronic symptoms, that's when we'll look at something like shockwave. And we didn't really discuss PRP injections, but that's another option. If patients, again, have failed all the conservative options that we have to offer, then we talk about surgery.